So without further ado, I'd like to hand you across to Keith and the team at Least Clear. Thank you, Stuart, and uh, welcome everybody to our presentation on low, or you might even call them, a floor bed. But the usual bit, a uh, wee bit about List Clare, if you've never heard of us before. Uh, we've been in this business for over 20 years, and we're an independent specialist in rehabilitation equipment. And our equipment specialists operate throughout the UK and Ireland, as we have offices in Cheshire, Belfast and Scotland. Uh, we work very closely with the OTs, physios and care staff by providing solutions for education, um, patient handling, beds and pressure care, led mostly by education. Now, just to tell you who Burmar is again, if you hadn't uh, uh, logged on last week, Burmar are actually uh, the home care division of a company called Stiegelmeyer of Germany. Um, they've been actually making hospital nursing beds for 120 years. They're the biggest nursing bed company in Germany, and they are clearly the market leader there, um, with all products designed and manufactured in their own factories in Germany and Poland. Uh, we have been their main export business partner from about 2002, and just to think of them as the BMW of the nursing bed world. Now, it's about standards today and heights. But there are two manufacturing standards in place for the safe manufacturing of medical nursing beds, um, but they're obviously used in different environments. Uh, these standards cover all health and safety issues with all types of medical beds in the different nursing environments. Now, those nursing environments that they name are acute ICU, long-term nursing care, nursing homes, and then community care is what's called section four. And that's the only section where there is not 24-hour professional care, so the standards are slightly different to it. And it also covers trolleys in the acute and hospital sector. Now, the adult version, which is 6601-2-52, has been in use for over 10 years. And now, that last year, the children's version became enforced to the manufacturers. But if you want to learn more about the standards, it's for another day. You can ask your list clear area manager and you'll get the details at the end as they can assist you with that directly um, as it's a separate presentation because there's a lot to these standards. Now, what we're talking about today in the standards is the following range of lift height covered by it. Um, this states that the height range should be measured to the top of the frame of the bed and be 40 centimetre at its lowest point and 80 centimetre to its highest point. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the height range requirements reflect the maximum available working height of 80 centimetres for the care provider. Now, uh, this covers all heights of care providers from about, I would say, 6 foot 2 down to about 5 foot 1. Now, the lowest entry and exit height of 40 centimetres for the user is the one that caused some issues. A short person would find it uh, very difficult at uh, that height to maybe get in and out of the bed, especially with some of the very deep medical mattresses. So really the height stated in the standards, we're really saying that the height range should be incorporated into the manufacturer of the bed. So what if the bed went from 30 to 80? This would be fine, but creates an issue in the community care bed market that I will discuss shortly. And actually our Allura has that height range. Now, soon after the standards became enforced to the manufacturers in Europe, there was a growing demand for beds that went lower. Hence, the term low entry bed became more and more requested. But for what type of patient had they been aimed for? And what is it actually perceived as a low bed? So a patient who is at risk of falling or climbing out of bed over the side rails, they needed the bed to go lower, close to the floor, and that can be cared, that and still can be cared for with the side rails, and they left the side rails down when you go to the floor, and a soft mat would usually be put into place, and for some strange reason they call that a crash mat, which I still can't figure that out, um, but it stops you hurting themselves when they're rolled out of bed. Then a short patient would need the bed to become below 40 to enable them to get in and out with ease, um, and it, that, that height range would need to be between 25 and 30 at the lowest point to make it a, a good sort of a choice of height. Also, um, they would use the lower type bed for a heavy limb patients, something like oedema on the legs. 
So the patient could lower it down and try and slide the, the heavy bed in or let them in themselves to try and avoid the curves actually lifting or trying to work with the leg. Now, how do you achieve this and maintain a good cur working height range? Now, this wee table actually shows you the range of most of the standard nursing beds. As you can see, we've put the first one down as 23 centimetres to 63 centimetres. Um, that's actually the height range used by the majority of the low community bed nursing units, uh, manufacturers, sorry. Um, so, no, you haven't actually reached the recommended maximum lift height and care is therefore at risk of back injury. So, is 20 centimetres to 70 centimetres safe to use? No, really, uh, you still haven't reached the minimum safe working height of 80 centimetres. So is the height range of 30 to 80 centimetres all right? Now that means it's quite com not complicated, but it means they have to use an actuator that's at the end of the bed, which you'll see over here in a second, which is 50 centimetres in stroke, which means you end up with a very high headboard. And many OTs and physios and nursing staff were always looking for a bed that went below 30. So 20 centimetres to 80 centimetres would be regarded as the holy grail of lift height. Uh, for nursing beds with a, an acceptable that that would actually become a low entry bed. So standard beds present, um, what they did was obviously the 40 to 80 was increased the risk of falls. So most low community beds sacrificed the safe full nursing height, risking injury, um, obviously to any tall cur. Now when I say tall, I'm not talking six foot six, I'm talking about from five foot one up. Uh, sorry, five foot eight, five foot nine, and above that. But low beds obviously present an entrapment hazard beneath the bed, which has to be addressed. And the beds with a range of more than 40 centimetres usually have um, high headboards, high footboards, tend to be expensive, can be difficult to transport and install. Now, to explain about home care beds. Um, home care beds for the patient's house are designed for delivery and install with ease. You can see in a minute or two, I actually have a picture of the bed beside me. So the industry norm from the motor manufacturers, which is Linac, uh, the bed had a travel of 40 centimetres. Hence, that's where you got your 23 to 63 centimetres or your 40 to 80. And this uh, keeps the height of the foot and headboard section to what will always be perceived as a normal uh, height, so clients have a field of vision over the top and they don't feel so enclosed. However, has a risk assessment been carried out and they inform tall care workers that if you've installed a bed that goes from 23 to 63, that the bed is not actually reaching the full required working height. And again, I'm not talking about six foot six, I'm talking about five foot nine and upwards. I need the bed to come out to 80 centimetres and I'm six foot one. So this is a problem, uh, community care beds are now, they're not scissor action beds, um, if you understand what I mean. Uh, community bed is designed, um, as you will see in a second, um, that they have the actuators built into the headboard or the footboard. This was to ease the issue of delivering the nursing beds into somebody's own home. So if anyone has ever tried to deliver a full acute hospital bed, which I have done in the past, into somebody's house, you'll find how difficult that actually is. So the longest lift stroke in the market is around about 50 centimetres for the actuators, which meant that's where you got your 30 to 80. Um, now this obviously doubles the length of the um, actuator to about over 1.2 to 1.3 metres. So you end up with, what, as you can see in the picture, extremely high headboards and footboards. But you still hadn't received, actually achieved the perfect lift height of my, my uh, holy grail was 20 centimetres to 80. So we got together with Burmar again, and on this one we seemed to have a solution ourselves um, and wanted Burmar to use all their skills to develop and manufacture the concept. We knew if it worked, um, then it would be manufactured to the highest quality and it would be completely complied to the standards for this, um, in this case for adult beds. We're not talking about children's beds in this case. So what was our wish list? that we put together when we met Burmar. We wanted an 80 centimetre full uh, car height. We wanted the 20 centimetre lowest height if possible. Uh, we wanted to comply to the adult standards of 50, 60, or sorry, 60, you know, the, the adult bed standards. Um, 
We also want the standard height of footboards and headboards so that um, it didn't look um, strange. And we all did our transport kit. And then obviously we needed to discuss the extra entrapment safety features if the bed goes that low, because obviously there's a, there could be a issue of pinching. So what I'm going to do next is slowly present to you the Lennis bed that uh, that uh, basically Burmar created, and we were uh, had the, the pride time of going over and watching its development. They spent the evening uh, a year testing it, going up and down with a full working load. So does the bed come in four sections? Yes. Can we achieve the 20 to 80 height range? Yes, but Burmar did it one better and went down to 15 centimeters. They also added an auto regression backrest on it for us without asking, and with a safe working load in all of 200 kilograms. And it will be available from May, but we're going to go live just now to me in Belfast, and we're going to switch on uh, so I can describe what I've got. So as you can see, I've got two beds sitting side by side. This is your Dali standard low entry bed that goes from 23 to 63, and this is the Lennis bed that goes from 15 to um, 80. And as you can see over here, that was the way the Dali bed would have been delivered. The Dali bed would have actually had the actuators on the outside. And to tell you that they've actually manufactured over a million Dalis gives you the idea of how big a company this actually is. So what I wanted to try and demonstrate with you, without turning my back on you and being rude, is if I get the handsets and show you the difference. So we press the variable height button together, just to show that a man can multitask, hopefully. And as you will see, this was actually set at 40 centimeters. I've used the beds without the mattresses to give you a better indication, um, but obviously you can put mattresses on it if you wish at the end. Um, but you'll see the bed coming up in the air. At that moment, the low entry dolly has stopped. But you can actually see the Lennis bed is carrying on, and you can actually see how it's starting to work. It has a telescopic end because it has internal workings that cable and bring the bed up in a different sections. Hence, that's why we were able to keep the headboards the way it was. So when we go to lower, just to show you, you'll see the dolly lowers down to 23. But the Lennox is going to stop first at 40. So you know you've reached your standard height for the um, for regression in and out of the bed. I'll just stop the other first to go goes on down. Right, there's the bed stopped. They then engage it again, and it drops down to 23. Again, it stops at 23. Okay, which you can now see is the same height as the dolly. Then what you can actually do, and why I'm doing this is I'm going to place my foot here, is it alarms when it goes down to 15. You can hear it dropping and hopefully you can hear the alarm. And as you can see, it can't uh, compress my foot into the ground. Everything lifts just in case. But now you've got the length from 15 and as you see in the back up again, again it stops the first one in case they want the aggress out of the bed. Again, this is doubled in the handbook, so you can imagine, but this is Burmar creating the safest working platform they could possibly do. And back up to uh, the full height of 80. Which, if you can imagine, if there was a 15 centimeter mattress, means that I can do manual handling with ease. And you'll see that more next week if you come on uh, to our webinar. And it's such a difference for the curves. As you can see, I don't know whether the angle I've got correct. Auto regression is standard on the backrest. And then obviously leg rest with an auto contour button added as well. There is a Trendelenburg function on it, which is on a separate handset at the minute. And again, um, if you were on last week watching the Regia partner bed, you'll see where you can lift it up. And it stays in the, uh, what's called, it's actually technically called the fighter knee kick position. 
but when you lower it down, you'll actually hear five clicks. And when you lift it up, that would elevate the patient's feet up in the air. So you get the idea of the Lennis bed. It really is, it breaks into four sections, just like the dolly. It comes on a transport kit, just like the dolly. I, there is connectors to hang up the wires, or just because, believe it or not, I had the Targard supplies guys to let me keep these two beds, because um, the dolly low bed is the contract bed for the HSE in Ireland, and there's quite a demand for them at the minute. Um, and these are actually going to go on out to the house once they're decontaminated from being in here. Um, to give you a better idea. So we're just going to jump back to the, uh, uh, the presentation to show you the contact details of all the area reps um, in England, Scotland, Wales for Stuart, and um, obviously Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, that's their contact details. This is kind of a short presentation because I'm quite proud of this because we've been waiting on this bed, must be now eight years. Um, so we've been actually very proud to be able to launch it today for its full product launch in May. So we're going to jump back over to R. Stewart to ask is there any questions. Thank you very much, Keith. Yes, Adam's been answering a few questions in the chat box. So I'm going to give you two in one go, if I may. So firstly is uh, you confirmed that the beds are going to be available from May. Secondly, yep. uh, where can people see the bed? Will you be showcasing them anywhere that people can come and have a look at them? Um, yes, obviously, Stuart, um, all the area managers will have their stock during April. Um, um, when it's appropriate to be able to do the shows, obviously, um, by the time we have shown all our products, uh, Stuart would need about nine stands at your OTEC show for the OTs because obviously we have partner beds, we have low beds, and we have quite a few products that we're bringing into uh, the product range this year. Uh, we would normally have done the OT show, we would normally have done the NAPES conference with this, but unfortunately we'd probably have to do this more at a local level uh, where we'd bring the bed into your department or your loan store um, um, so we could present it there. So that's uh, we're planning the guys to be able to do their own presentation from the studio and witness. Um, obviously, when the uh, the green light goes after May and we can get together with meetings, um, yes, we'll be doing meetings with the OTs and the um, and the commissioning groups for where there is uh, companies like Mediquip or the um, you know uh, Millbrook to keep myself completely correct and all the different versions um, because. You know, really what we can foresee is that this should be the first choice of the low entry bed for community stores from the simple reason that it now comes up to the fully left height of 80, where they've never had that before. Back to Super. you, Stuart. Sorry. Th thanks, Keith. That's great. Uh, in terms of the cost, uh, a couple of questions, uh, if I may, again. Uh, cost, Fair is that... If, if you're looking to buy a few for your department or trust, is there a specific price? Where would you envisage having these beds? More nursing homes, residential homes, or uh, community? This, a, this, this bed, I, sorry, sure, it was me jumping in again. I have to practice that bit. Um, this bed is fundamentally designed for the uh, Maria 4 of uh, the... the, uh, the um, the uh, medical standards, and that is actually for somebody's own house where they don't have 24-hour professional care. But nursing homes buy these in, they do. Um, it's the first time where a bed that will be, let's just say we have a list price for it set, but we have a, an idea of a contract price and a bed replacement price into nursing homes should they wish. I have been asked that bed now for 15 years for an area within Northern Ireland to replace all the, res the residential care beds within that unit because they wanted the falls presentation of 20, but they knew they did not want to put in a bed that did not come up to 80 centimetre working height. You know, we're obviously lobbying this through the manual handling team, through National Back Exchange, things like that. Um, I'll be doing it through Ireland, through the HSE and things like that because, you know, it's there's always going to be the need for the 4080 bed, but now they have the standard properly covered and it means that the, should they actually ever need it, to me this is, should be the first choice because 
have trusts actually done a risk assessment when they've issued a low entry bid? I would actually say no, that they haven't. They haven't actually made people aware that it doesn't come up to free working height. Back to you, Stuart. Thank you, Keith. In terms of the product, uh, can you explain, you've got a Penryn hoist, I believe, I'm looking in the back ring. Can you just explain some of the extras or some of the extra attachments, bed levers, that type of thing that is possible to go with the bed, well, please? Enough, you can get a bed light with this. You can get a bed extension with it. You can get split side rails. You can get the split side rail that actually makes it into an assist rail because attaching an assist rail onto beds with full side rails are an issue. Um, if anybody saw the Regia bed, it's kind of like that. Um, that was last week. Um, there's also a battery backup. There's um, there's numerous things. There's even a reading light comes with it, but um, I'd be pushing the NHS to buy a reading light under the bed, <laughs> work through the hand control. And uh, believe it or not, Lenac would actually even have a nurse call system built into some of their beds through Lenac, where if the patient digresses out of the bed, it phones the nurse and tells them they're out of bed. <clears throat> but again, all cost. Back to you, Stuart. Thanks, Keith. Uh, one of the questions is, do they come in different lengths? What's the, the lengths available? Um, at the minute, you can actually make it out to 20 centimetre extension. No different than the dolly or any of the four section beds. So it comes in two metre length, which is your standard nursing bed, 90 by 200. And then you can add 20 centimetre extension on it, should you wish to have an elongate for a patient of above 5 foot 10 or 5 foot 11, whose feet go into plantar fixation. And they don't want their toes to touch the footboard. But again, if you watched the Regia one last week, um, it's on the OTEC site, um, as well as this one will go on to it. You'll see why we suggested the other beds for that sort of type of client. This will become, over the next few years, I would say the standard platform from Burma. Uh, we've talked about a 120 wide version, that's bariatric. We've talked about um, a children's version, um, but they wanted to get what would be the mass produced one ready first for us. And we have been pushing this for the last six months. And it's been great to use your platform. This is the first time this bed has been seen in Europe, never mind the UK or Ireland. Back to you, Stuart. Thank you, Keith. That's excellent. I've uh, just got one other question, if I may. In terms of, uh, you mentioned that this bed is designed for people's homes. Is there a variety of mattresses that will fit the bed, or does any community loan store mattress fit the bed? Any community loan store mattress fits it automatically, Stuart. It's again, that's the bed sizes, like last week's uh, presentation, are all led by the acute hospital mattress care range. And they're always technically 90 by 200. Some of them go right 85, 86. And a lot of people don't actually read the handbook to see what size of mattress fits the bed. Um, and there's also a choice of um, a third side rail now coming as well, just in case you're using, uh, pardon the expression, a high alternate in our system as well. You know, that's something that people they really, they never, being a man, first guilty of not reading the handbook to read what size of mattress fits the bed. But this is designed for, should it be a Nimbus, Pegasus, Tally, Direct Healthcare, I can name them all if you want. They all fit at standard. Back to you, Stuart. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, Adam's answered all the rest of the questions in the chat box, so thank you to thank everybody. You. Uh, for the questions. So that's the end of the questions, Keith. So just in summary, uh, we will have a copy of the handouts sent across to everybody and a copy of the video. So Keith and the team will arrange that for everyone who's come in today. So thank you very much. A big thank you for, for Keith for giving us the opportunity to showcase the bed today. As Keith has mentioned, this is the first time this bed has been shown. Uh, across Europe, so it's great for us to have the opportunity to check it out. Uh, there's not a huge variety of beds out there at the moment that we can look at, and I know for myself, I haven't been able to attend a conference. Uh, last conference I attended was about a year ago, and that was one of our own, one of the OTAC events. So it is really great to see all these products again uh, by Liz Clare and uh, know that you can get hold of them for your clients. So thank you very much, Keith, for giving us the opportunity to showcase this bed. If anybody did miss the partner bed presentation last week, please drop me an email uh, or 
get hold of Keith at Liz Clay if you've got Keith's details. If not, it's Stuart, S T U A R T, at promoting independence.co.uk. We can send you the details for last week's video as well in case you missed the part in the bed presentation so once again thank you very much to everybody who made this happen today it's a brief session it's lasted about 30 35 minutes it's really good to have you on board if you've got any questions please come back to us take care and uh, see you all very soon goodbye